this morning. About 40 miles, 35 to 40 miles to do some Wahoo trolling and whatever else we get into. What a pretty morning. Yo, let's see if we can get into some fish. I'll have a 320 gram Nomad Ridgeback jig in the pink glow. Sitting in 300 feet of water, the structure below us at, is at 214. Well, there's the bottom. Oh my, oh shoot. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was hung up on the bottom. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. The bottom don't take drag from you. Oh, he's getting sharp. Right now? Yeah, look what's going on. What is go <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> he got shark. Oh, got one. Uh, got one. <laughs> oh yeah, you got one. Good. Oh my gosh. I'm bringing this one up just to see. I think the shark got mine. I tell you one thing. I'm sorry, but I ain't having <laughs> nothing on my hands. Wow, bro. <laughs> Pretty sure the sh shark got this one. <laughs> it's feeling kind of sharky. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. It's like you got a freaking anchor. Yeah, that swims. <laughs> there it is. Whoa. Big crap. That's a big shark. Oh, what is this? There's another shark. Dude. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look how many sharks are down there. Dude, there, there is dude, a that's shark. A, do I have a shark on? Oh, I do. Yeah, I got a shark on my jig. That's a big old shark. That's why we're losing jigs, bro. <laughs> I'd say, look at that sucker. <sighs> wow, that's a that's a pretty good fish. <laughs> look at that sucker. That is a big shark. Wow. Hey, at least you got. It. Hey, oh, y'all, we got a shark on the jig. I wish I could tell you what kind it is. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Kind of creepy being right next to it, isn't it? <laughs> wow, that's that's some. Um, that's like so close but so far away in terms of getting that jig back. Oh, that's a little close for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you can work it like a D hooker and pull it that way. Oh, get out right three, two, one. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> Woo! And there he goes. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to leave that jig and that poor shark. Y'all, that was a big old shark. I'm going to drop this jig down again. Throwing this on the die with Saltiga. This is a 50 size reel, a Crowder, six and a half foot conventional rod 65 pound yazuri super braid and 80 pound yazuri leader so we just came to a rig cut off rig it's old gas wells that they end up cutting off and leaving it at least 75 feet clearance from the surface of the water but that's pretty cool looking at it on 3d we're gonna see if we can catch something on it there's some fish on there i'm gonna drop down this nomad ridgeback jig some 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and 40 pound yazuri super braid oh my gosh oh, no. i'm hooked up now too <laughs> oh my god yet uh mouth over there battling a big one and then i'm bringing one up <laughs> this one's coming up pretty nice i like it it gave me a break from catching those big old sharks <clears throat> god still takes them forever to get up here Ooh, that might be an alma oh my gosh big shark wow right. he's coming but yeah he's coming on that side oh no i got an almaco wow that was scary you didn't see him i got dinner that's a big almaco wow 
<laughs> I'll check out that nice Almaco Jack. That's gonna go good in the cooler. He ate that Nomad Ridgeback. It almost got smoked by a big old shark, but I'm glad I was able to get him in. So he gets to go. He gets to go with us. We'll bleed him out, spike him, and keep on fishing. That's a nice Almaco Jack. I'm gonna drop this Nomad Jig back down again. I was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's see if that bull shark shows up. Are you even jigging? I don't know what I was doing there. Mm. Yeah, he was chasing it last time. Pretty, pretty good. It was creepy actually seeing it. Mm. Hooked up again. Nice fish. Ooh. Yeah. He's pretty far down there though. <clears throat> that shark wore me out earlier. Whoa! Red snapper. Red snapper. Who would have known? Good eating size. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I got to vent him or uh, descending device him. So I caught this really nice red snapper. And see how his stomach's protruding? This is a sign of bear trauma because of the pressure difference from up here to where he's living down in the deep. So we remove this jig and you can vent him or you can use a descending device like I'm about to do. And these are actually, I don't know if they're still free or not, but these are the sequelizers. And I believe if you, and you take an online course and they send you one. So we got it set at 50 feet. Go and drop him down. And it will release the jaws at 50 feet. And there's a pretty high percentage of survivability. I don't fill them on there anymore and we're good to go reel that up and have that on standby for the next one if we catch one you required to have a vent tool and slash or a descending device on board sweet all right see all those jaws opened up there we go let's drop the jig down again all righty so we let that fish down on descending device let's kind of drop this jig down one more time then we're probably gonna head in we've been out here uh hot minute <laughs> we spent four hours trolling oh there we go oh all it took was oh my gosh <laughs> all it took was one pause that worked out good huh mm. oh, <laughs> no i'm kind of weak from that shark earlier <laughs> oh i think he's getting chased by something yeah he's just doing he's shaking his head could be another almaco I don't. I'm sore. <laughs> oh, there he is. I'm gonna go right. Yep. Nice one. Got another fish for the cooler. Oh, that's a nice one. That's another nice Almaco Jack. What a gorgeous fish. Really good eating. They got it like a nice buttery taste. But he ate this little 80 gram Nomad Ridgeback in the sardine color. I'm gonna bleed them out and throw them on ice. Yeah, so we just came out a little bit deeper and this is actually a sunken army tank. There are hundreds of M60 army tanks decommissioned that have been put out here as reefs instead of rotting in the desert. They're out here enhancing our fishing. You can see the solid structure right there. Some of them, you can actually see the barrel sticking up. I think, oh yeah, we can, look at that. You see the hole, the turret, and then you can kind of see the barrel, see that hard red? That's all dense metal. That's actually pretty cool. And there's a bunch of fish on this. See what we can catch. That is awesome. I'm going to take this Nomad Squid Trex. It's a 110 size. And drop that sucker down. I love using that lure. And this is just a Tranks 300 on a dark matter psychedelic conventional. Seven foot rod. That thing's already getting hit on the way down. And we have a fish. I mean, that squid tracks just absolutely works wonders out here. That is a target species. That is a trigger fish. Oh, let's see if it's going to be a keeper. I don't know. They have to be 15 inches fork length. And this one is pretty much 13 inches 
fork length, which means to the middle of their tail. You like that squid trex though. I mean, it just works so well. So we're gonna let this trigger fish go and try to get one a little bigger. There you go. I really like using artificials because they're not as messy as having squid on board, but I always bring squid or cigar minnows as backup. I'm gonna drop that squid back down again. I do have it on some 50 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon leader, and this is 30 pound Yazuri Super Braid. Let it go down. That one, I didn't even have to do anything. It pretty much just hit it on the fall. Most of the time, I just kind of jig it in place and you'll feel it vibrate. And it swims, vibrates down there, makes a lot of commotion. This one glows, I believe. And you don't even have to really do anything. You can just let it sit there. Look at that. I'm just letting it sit there on the drift and they're already coming up and hitting it. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's another good fish there. Man, they love this thing. I think because they don't really see something like that often. Oh, this is a nice fish. What are you? Oh, that's a red snapper. This one I cannot keep out of season. But that is a good size one there. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This is an American red snapper. And look, he's spitting up a bunch of, ew, what is that, squid, jellyfish? <laughs> I don't know what he's spitting up. We're gonna get these hooks out of them. See why they call them red snapper. Gorgeous fish, good eating too. There you go, man. And he gone down to the bottom, cool. Let's get old Squiddy back down again. I pretty much will always have one of these lures tied on. That, a hex jig, and then an x wrap You can catch anything that swims in the Gulf of Mexico any time of year on those three lures right there. Lift up, drop down. I like this dark matter. This is the seven foot and it's the X, the 15 to 40 pound. It's a fast action rod. So it's perfect for doing this type of fishing right here. I like a fast action for any type of vibe lures like these. If you're throwing some slow pitch stuff, you wanna get a dedicated slow pitch rod which you can do with this as well. But we just hooked up again. Wow, these are hard fighting fish. <laughs> I mean, really hard fighting fish. Come here, you. What are you gonna be this time? Be a good trigger fish. Nope, that's a big old red snapper again. Wow. There we go. There's some strong, strong current today. So these are about average size snapper, but fighting them against that current makes them feel like they're 20 pounds. But I mean, that would be a legal fish in the season. There he goes. He gone. You definitely want to run a leader with this. Like I said, this is 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I just have a short leader with a double, with a uni to uni knot. If you run a longer leader, you can and do something slim like an FG. But this is about a three foot leader and works perfect for this situation. But, yep. Uh-oh, wasn't paying attention on that. Oh, this isn't gonna be good. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention on that drop and backlash. Woo, thank goodness nothing hit it. That would have been bad. There's another good one. Oh, wow. I mean, how can you not have fun doing this type of fishing right here? I mean, hard fighters, artificial lures, catching just awesome fish out here in the Gulf. There's another red. Looks like we've got into the uh, red snapper a little more than I wanted to. <sighs> That'd be another nice keeper. And he gone. <laughs> That's a dense fish there. They're gonna eat it or are they just playing with it? Okay, we have something here. I did come out a little bit deeper with the fiddler crab. And just doing a drift over some of these steel pyramids. See what we hooked up. 
Oh, those are delicious. Yes, maybe small, but it is delicious. That is a sand perch. I mean, the best tasting fish that lives out here. They're excellent grouper bait and big amberjack bait, but they are delicious fried up pole like a bluegill. So we're gonna keep this one. Try that again. I love those fish, they taste so good. Oh, we got another bite. Oh, that one felt pretty good. Okay, we're hooked up again. And <laughs> this is literally the same filler crab I started out with. I have not changed it out, which is funny. Let's see what it's gonna be this time. Got a little bit more weight to it. And that is, oh man, another one. Look at those, those are beautiful fish. Really cool looking colors on them. We're gonna keep him as well. I mean, that is one of the tastiest fish out here. Absolutely love them. All right, I think we have another one. Yeah, we do. We have a fish, sweet. See, circle hooks just pretty much put pressure on it and start reeling because it will roll into the corner of the fish's mouth majority of the time. If you yank it, a lot of times you'll yank that hook out of its mouth before it can set. Here's another fish. <laughs> There's another beautiful sand perch. Delicious eating fish right there. I mean, it's not the biggest fish in the world. I catch a lot of big fish, come out here and really wreak havoc on AJs and when the king mackerel show up, but these right here are the best eating ones in my opinion. Something else is nibbling on it. On it, you can see that rod tip kind of jumping. Oh yeah, I have it. Sweet, got another fish. <laughs> oh man, this is fun on light tackle. I like to do this type of videos just to show you you don't need or have to go out and buy a real large tackle to catch fish out in the Gulf. You can use inshore tackle and catch a lot of fish this way. See what you're going to be. There you are. Oh, another beautiful squirrel fish or sand perch. Everyone has their colloquial terms that they use, but these are good eating. That's all I know. Ooh, it is a uh, windy and crappy weather. We're back home in Orange Beach. Spring is in the air. We got the Duneberry vines growing. Those are some delicious berries when they bloom. My neighbor actually makes some Duneberry jam and golly, it's so good. And then other flowers are blooming. Seeing that structure on the 3D is really cool than those old M60 tanks, it's awesome. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go drop a comment down below, a like and a share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we're almost at 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane and awesome. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all. We'll see you on the next Barrymore Saltwater Fishing video. Most importantly, and as always, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later. Oh, that's a little close for comfort. <laughs> <laughs>